Hey guys, hope you're amazing. I am on a little mini vacation and I'm literally staring at the beach right now. So I'm taking a break to talk to you because I had a girl hit my inbox this week and she said, hey, I've been going through some major life stressors and my stomach started acting up again. I have irritable bowel and it's starting to get worse. What can I do? And this is a very common message that I see I receive on a regular basis because it is something that is affecting millions of Americans every single day. And I was one of those millions that suffered for many years. Things like gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, heartburn, they ruled my life. And this might be your reality too because it's the reality of a lot of people that I come into contact with on a regular basis. So tonight or today I want to talk to you a little, little bit about your gut, and I'm gonna give you six ways to heal your gut and improve your digestive health without pills and potions or anything like that. Because a lot of times, the truth is, is that many people can heal from just food alone. And while that's great for the people who can, there are others who they're not so lucky, right? So. Before you go, after you've tried the food thing, before you go and hire someone to help you, you might wanna try a few things on your own just to kind of troubleshoot some of those areas. So that's really where this information comes in. When you've tried diet, diet's not really getting you the results you want. You've seen my information, you're not really sure if you should reach out yet, that's okay. Here's a little bit of information that may give you some relief that you've been looking for. So when I was told that I had IBS, you know, all those years ago, I left my doctor's office with a medication, but I still suffered for many years. And as a matter of fact, that lasted about 30 years. And knowing what I know now, we can actually get to the root of these health issues instead of attempting to mask the symptoms. So when someone comes to me, they've usually been diagnosed. They either have some sort of infection in the gut, you know, they've, they've had, you know, an IBS diagnosis, um, they may have food sensitivities, they may have allergies, and one thing that's really overlooked is leaky gut syndrome or intestinal permeability. Oh, I know those are big words, and I, you know, if you haven't heard of those, that's okay. It doesn't really matter, but what I want you to know is that a lot of these gut-related symptoms and issues are leading to other problems down the road if we just let those go on and on and get worse. So, by the time someone reaches me, it's not just a gut-related symptom or a gut-related diagnosis they have. There's really a lot of other systems that are starting to get involved. And digestion really starts with the food that we consume on a regular basis. Now, we need that food to give us the vitamins, the minerals, and the amino acids that we need every day to function properly. And if we're getting those things, then we're probably doing really good. A lot of times, though, there's a lot of packaged foods in our diets, processed foods, and these foods really break down our digestive system and they cause poor health. So if you're one of those, you've tried to remove some of these processed foods, you've really brought in some whole foods, things just really aren't giving you the results that you're looking for, then here are six things that you can do to kind of add to that. Number one, if you're taking a lot of anti-inflammatories, if you're taking um, Tylenol, if you're taking things like that over the counter for like pain relief, you want to slow down on those and you want to do that because they are thinning the lining of your gut and they will cause additional disease processes down the road. So you can do things that are a little more natural. You can either take something like Boswellia or you can use something like turmeric, which is a natural anti-inflammatory. And a lot of times you can just put that on your food. You can use it every day as a seasoning on your food and that will help decrease inflammation in the body and it's known to act in the same way as those anti-inflammatories. You Number two, you do not wanna be relying on antacids. So if you have indigestion, the first thing you think is, hey, I need to go take an antacid, right? Maybe a Tums or something like that. Maybe you're doing something like a prescription from your doctor. And what happens is these things may work short term, but they are making things worse down the road. These antacids interfere with your hydrochloric acid production. And what happens is this stomach acid is usually low already. It's not even high. 
And when we have low stomach acid and we start to put these things in, it makes it worse, actually. One of the things that I love to use, and I'm in my hotel room, and I actually bought this um, for the trip because I love to make homemade dressings and things with this. But I use apple cider vinegar, and you can actually use this as a way to test your stomach acid levels at home. So if you have regular indigestion after meals, you can simply take like a tablespoon of this apple cider vinegar about 20 minutes before your meal. And if it helps improve your stomach after your, after your meal's over and you're digesting a little bit easier, you don't really have the indigestion that you normally do, then that could mean that you are actually helping with that low stomach acid. So what that means is you don't necessarily have a high stomach acid problem, you have a low stomach acid problem. And this is actually more common and we see this as we age as well. So the stomach acid naturally decreases. Now I teach my clients a way to self-test on a regular basis so that once they've finished a complete gut restoration program, they can bring this in and they don't have to worry about dealing with low stomach acid anymore. They can really take care of that you know, on a regular basis just to make sure. But apple cider vinegar is a great way for you to do that um, and just kind of test those levels if you haven't ever used it before. And number three, the third way you really want to work on your gut health or, you know, kind of an outlier is reducing your stress. So stress weakens your intestinal lining, but not only that, it impacts almost every organ system of your body. And studies are showing this over and over again. So my, cl my clients, they come in and they complain of digestive issues and they are getting worse during stress, high stress time. So think about that message as I got earlier in my inbox, right? What can I do? I'm under a lot of stress and my digestive issues are, you know, at a peak. Well, the truth is, is that we can calm the nervous system. And one of my favorite ways to do this is by using castor oil packs. So we can put a pack over our liver, over our stomach, and we can really calm the digestive system down by using that. It activates those rest and digest signals to the body and it helps the body enter into a relaxed state. And it helps with things like constipation and it helps just regulate those bowel movements if that's one of your issues as well. The fourth thing is it has to do with food and it, um, it is do not mix your grains with fruit. So when you combine grains and fruit, say your first meal of the day is oatmeal with some fruit in it, these things are actually causing fermentation in the gut. It leads to gas, it leads to bloating, it leads to blood sugar imbalance, all these different things. So if you have a weakened gut lining, then you are asking for trouble if you're mixing these types of foods together because you're causing more overgrowth of bacteria and that's the reason that you're getting a lot of this gas and bloating. So the fifth thing is eat your fresh fiber first. So when you look at your plate, you may wanna put some raw vegetables on there and these raw vegetables, like if you have a salad before your meal, this raw vegetables and chewing those foods and breaking those foods down, they create those really good digestive enzymes in your mouth. And when you're swallowing, you're gonna help prepare your body to help break down a lot of those heavier foods like those meat proteins. So the next time that you look at your plate, choose those fresh fiber vegetables first to help you really prepare your body to digest those heavier foods. And then number six is you want to invest in the right tests. So I'm known for giving lab, lab tests, right? I'm, I'm known for helping people get to the root of their health issues by using some of those advanced labs. And I do this when it's necessary. And a lot of my clients come to me and they say, hey, I want to do some of those lab tests. Well, the thing I want to let you know here is that all lab tests are not created equal. Sometimes clients will come to me and they'll have lab tests already in their hand and they'll say, hey, I had this lab test done. I found it online. Here you go. Here's my results. Now interpret the test. Well, great job. I'm glad that you did that. But the truth is, is that these tests are not created equal. And you can go and get a food sensitivity test from one company and it may test for one marker, usually IgG. And that's okay. It usually is going to like come back with something on it because we all have some degree of leaky gut, but, you know, and that's why a lot of these IgG tests come back positive, you know, because if that intestinal lining is open and these foods are spilling into circulation, the body's eliciting an attack and you're going to get a positive reaction. But the truth is, is that's one type 
of reaction in the body. So you want to make sure that you're getting something a little more comprehensive if you're really looking to help um, get to this food sensitivity issue. Now that's one test, of course, there's many different tests out there, but that's just one example. So make sure that you're working with someone who knows, number one, which test to order, and number two, how to interpret these tests accurately. I love working with self-healers, but just make sure that you're putting your money in the right places when you're ordering these tests. So if you're ready to heal your gut, if you're finally ready to improve your health, these are a few great ways that can help you get started. And if you reach the end of the road and you're not really sure where to turn, then that may be somewhere where you consider hiring a guide. And if that's where you are, then let's get to the root of your symptoms together and get you on a path toward whole body wellness. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your awesome day. I'm going to be hitting the beach.